Hello everyone. Hope you're doing great. Welcome back to Revenger What If. We have got an exciting new movie for you today on. What if Naruto become the greatest shinobi mage and fell in love with Urza Scarlet? Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before we get started. Let's dive into the adventure. Naruto, are you sure about this? Stopping his hand, the 18 years old blonde looked up to his friend and grinned. Don't worry, I guarantee it's 100% safe, because I'm the greatest sealing master right now. The red haired teen stared at him blankly, I'm not questioning your ability in sealing, but just to ensure ether you really prepare your mind leaving this village. Naruto closed his eyes, yeah, this past two years had been fun and of course peaceful. I enjoyed this piece very much, but lately it become bored. What do you mean bored? You give your hardest to achieve this piece and now you're bored. Come on Gara, you must be understand what I mean, you come here to spar with me every day, it prove you that this world has become boring ever since we achieve peace. Sometimes I wonder if I do the right thing, he mumbled the last part. You did the right thing Naruto and because of that this world become like this. The fourth shinobi war ended two years ago by the death of Madara and Sasuke in Naruto's hand. Sasuke gave him such a hard battle with his newly acquired eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Thanks to the power that Itachi gave him, so he could activated Sharingan to fight Sasuke evenly. The last attack was Razan Shuriken destroying Suzanoo and Sasuke. The fight against Madara was fairly easier than Sasuke because Konan weakened him. Naruto ended the fight just like his father did to Madara, using Hiraishin in Kyubi mode and tore him with Razan Shuriken. Anyway, I've already prepared my mind to not only leave this village but also this world. That's why I invited you so we can leave together. Gara non existent eyebrow twitched when he heard the last part. I'm not going to elope with you, Uzumaki. Confused, Naruto raised his eyebrow at his friend comment, but then realization hit him that's not what I mean. Damn you. I know, I'm just joking. Gara said flatly. Seriously, Gara, it's not even funny. Pouted Naruto and continued to finish his project. After an hour Naruto stopped writing and let out a satisfied huff. Ha, finally finished. Gara stood calmly and inside the seal array Naruto did the necessary hand seal. After the last hand seal, okay let's go Fuenjutsu Ninpo. Bye bye elemental countries no jutsu. Activated. The seal glowed orange and the world twisted, in his vision at least. Goodbye Gara. till we meet again and then his eyes went wide as everything twisted sharply and flashed orange. Deep in the forest outside of Magnolia, an orange light descended outside the old tree where Makarov and Polyushka drinking tea together. You came again Makarov, you know I don't like humans. Ahahaha come on Polyushka, we're old friend and I came here to remind your ties to fairy tale. Beside, don't you feel lonely without anyone to talk? The female mage opened her mouth before an orange light hit the ground, she quickly getting away from the unknown magic as the orange light slowly disappeared revealing a young man with blonde hair and whiskered cheek. He clucked taste his head, it hurt like hell. Makarov and Polyushka just stood there shocked before she regained her calm and tried to help but the blonde then pull out a strange looking knife, startled she jumped back beside Makarov. Meanwhile Makarov eyeing the young man in front of him with wary eyes. Who are you two, you're not just a normal teenager don't you? He asked the teenager while preparing for the worst. Acha, oh sorry about that, old man. I don't mean any harm as long as you didn't attack me. The blonde apologized and put the knife. Staring at the blonde, Polyushka pointed him, then why did you take a knife? I'm sorry about that, I just wary if you mean me any harm. Feeling a bit left out Makarov make his presence known again, so my boy, who are you and what are you doing here? The blonde one narrowed his eyes. It's not polite asking someone's name before you told your name first, old man. Makarov smiled at the blonde, fine then, I'm Makarov and I'm fairy tale master, he said in friendly tone, so, yours? The blonde grinned, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. Nice to meet you, former shinobi of Konoha. Shinobi? You're not mage? What is mage? Is it edible? Naruto asked, drooling. Ahahaha. No, it's not edible. Mages are people that use magic, Makarov said. Naruto frowned, magic don't excess old man. Polyushka that had been silent snorted, you telling me that you didn't know magic? The blonde shook his head, just where are you come from? 
smiled sheepishly. Naruto scratched his head. Well, you see, I'm not from this world. I come from elemental countries, and in my home, there was no mage. There is only shinobi, and because lately it had been boring there, me did teleportation and transported to another world or dimension," said Naruto, and then explaining about shinobi system and village, leaving biju, war, and jutsu. Makarov and Polyushka eyes went as wide as a saucer. Both of them extremely shocked, surprised at the blonde revelation. There was no magic that could make people teleported in short distance, much less to another world. Taking a deep breath, they calmed themselves and sipped their tea. Confused, Naruto sipped his tea too. Maybe it's bad idea telling them. Oh well, if they attacked me, I just need to kill them, thought Naruto. In other hand, Makarov thought with lecherous face and perverted grin. Hum, I could take him to my guild, and then Fairy Tail will become stronger and famous. Otherwise, High is totally hot. He can get a lot of cute and pretty girls to join. He he. Seeing Makarov perverted grin, Naruto got a bad, good feeling. Oi, Gigi. What are you thinking? You got perverted face there, Naruto said and startling the poor old man from his wet dream. Makarov shook his head and smiled, how about you join my guild? Guild? What's that? Asked the confused idiot. Makarov explained the concept of mages banding together for security, comradeship, and strat. Once he was done, Naruto compared it to the hidden villages. Technically, it's same as your village but guilds are forbidden for taking assassination missions. Guilds also forbidden warring each other. Some guilds ignores the rule and excommunicated from the circle of mages and ordered to disband. These are called, dark guilds, and they are illegal. Closed his eyes in deep thought Naruto pondered for a moment, hmm, it seems people here rarely ask the lone mage for the job, they go to guild instead. I can get money and hopefully a hot girls. Naruto smiled pervertedly at the last thought. Naruto looked at Makarov, okay old man, I'll join your guild, but as you can see I'm new to this world. So I'll try selling for about three years, is that okay with you? Makaro chuckled, all right, I'll see you in three years, make sure you learn about this world, I'll look forward seeing you again. Okay then, goodbye Gigi, Baba, Naruto said as he vanished in swirl of leaves. Polyushka stunned and later angry hearing someone called her Baba, Makarov just laughed. You intend to have him for yourself, don't you? asked Polyushka after calmed herself. Makarov looked at his friend with serious look, he is very strong, it would be bad if he become enemies of fairy tale. Two years later somewhere in the road, a blonde young man whistling and enjoying himself, ah oh, this is life. Who would thought that Aero Senen Icha? ICHA series so damn popular here? I'm glad, I became a pervert he he he. In the last two years, Naruto had been make a name for himself. Ironically his nickname is same with his father, Yellow Flasher, an S-class mage. Not to mention the name of Uzumaki Naruto is author of the bestseller book Icha, Icha. Although not many people know his face as Yellow Flash they just know his appearance. Blonde hair and vibrant blue eyes. Then he heard someone shouted, Halt, Naruto sighed, and turned to look at his back. He saw two men stood beside each other and pointed their sword at him, maybe bandit, he thought. He just stood there before someone or rather a girl came and attacked the bandit. Naruto looked at the girl and saw that the girl had scarlet hair down to her hip and wearing armor, somehow she looked like mom. The girl then looked at him and when he was about to thank her, she swung her sword. He ducked under the sword and jumped back. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Why are you attacking me? The girl glared at him. Where is the money that you take from the villagers? Confused, Naruto said something smart, huh? Is she crazy? The crazy girl dashed toward him again. Don't play dumb bandit. She swung her sword in downward slash. Unfortunately for her, Naruto already expected her to attack him. He simply sidestepped and knee her body, then elbowed her head, sending her flying. The crazy girl flipped on the air and landed safely and glared at him. Naruto grinned at he girl. Now, I don't know what are you talking about, but if you want to fight that's fine with me. The girl still glaring at him. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. What's yours? The girl glare become more deadly and Naruto swear he saw Tsunade instead of her. Ursa Scarlet. You better told me where is the money or she trailed suggestively. Yeah, like that could happen. Naruto chuckled. Or what? You will kill me. I highly doubt you could do it, little girl. 
Urza gained a tick mark on her forehead hearing the last remark. One thing that she hate is losing and this guy, saying that she is a little girl? Oh he's so dead. This is you last chance, tell me or. Before she could finish her sentence, the man appeared baying her. Her eyes went wide at his speed and then she collapsed. Naruto sighed and scratched his butt, ah man I must back again to that village. Troublesome. Then he vanished in yellow flash. The next morning when she woke up, Urza was surprised when she found herself laid in bed. Wondering why she got there she asked the old man that owned the place and surprised when they told that a blonde teen brought her. After giving her thanks, she gone from the village after breakfast and lunch and vowed to defeat the blonde when they meet again and said her thanks. Unknown to her, the said blonde man watched her frown the rooftop. Well that was interesting. Urza Scarlet huh? Maybe we will meet again, red, then he vanished in yellow flash. One year later, it was another normal day at Fairy Tale, after Urza Scarlet released from her prison that actually didn't need to get imprisoned, all because Natsu. Lucy sighed when knowing it just a formality and Grey joking using cold words. Before someone reminded Natsu about his duel with Urza. Urza, let's continue our fight. Natsu said as he lunged at the armored wizard. I'm tired, Natsu. Urza replied and punched Natsu on the gut, making him passed out, no choice then let's do it. Grey and Elfman sweat drop as Happy shouted, the winner is Urza. Then they felt sudden rush of sleeping magic and all of them nodding and dozing off, and a man wearing mask that covered his entire face and a wand walked in and grabbed a peened job. Makarov who had been awake the entire time told him to put out his sleeping magic. Mistogan then begun the countdown. 5. He passed the Natsu and continued, 4. He opened the door, 3. Mistogan upper torso was now disappearing. 2. This time his lower body, 1. Then he was gone and everyone slowly woke up. W.H. What was that? Asked Lucy who was rubbing her eyes. Mira Jane replied to her. Oh, that was Mistogan, he always cast sleeping magic when he came. Nobody has ever seen his face, except Master. I've seen him too. Someone said from the second floor. Natsu hearing that voice stood up. Luxus fight me. In other hand Makarov was getting uneasy. They should already came it had been three years ignoring Luxus and Urza, but then someone called him, Master someone outside want to meet you. Makarov grinned, already knowing who it is, send him in. The man nodded and let the stranger in. The stranger walked to Makarov calmly as the other eyes went wide including Luxus. The man have spiky blonde hair that reached his shoulder and blue eyes and if you look hard enough you will see three whisker on his cheek, lean body and stood about five feet eight inches. Put it simple just imagine Minato with whisker. Most of the girl muttered how handsome the blonde is. Apparently the blonde didn't rally care and grinned to Makarov. Yo old man, long time no see. The guild member gasped at how casually the blonde addressed their master. Although, some of them called him but never they heard a stranger called him that. Makarov grinned at him, yeah, it had been three years, it seems you didn't forget your promise. The blonde smirked at him, of course not. I never forget my promise. Urza that shocked seeing the man that defeated her one years ago growled. Natsu and Grey scad the shit out of them seeing Urza angry, oi what's wrong Urza? Why did you get angry? But wet their pants as she glared at them. Hearing the someone said, Urza, Naruto smirked that didn't go unnoticed by Makarov, oi Naruto wh. Brup. Before he finished Naruto shoved a cake to his mouth while turning and smirked at Urza and then waved, why hello there Urza. Long time no see. Then all hell break loose. Hello Urza. We meet again, Naruto said as soon as he saw the red head. Urza snapped, drawing her sword from its scabbard but shocked to see Naruto foot stopped her sword midway. He lowered his feet, now, now, I come here not to fight. I come here in peace, and do peace sign at her. I know you're mad at me, he continued, but please refrain yourself for now and after this we can have fight to our heart content whenever and wherever you want. He looked at her straight in eyes, I prefer in bed though. Urza twitched at his comment. She turned her head at Makarov, expecting him to give her command to skin this man, only for him to shook his head negatively. She sighed at disappointment for not able to kick the stupid blonde ass. Naruto. It's better if you introduce yourself first, Makarov said. Naruto nodded his head. Okay folks, 
My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I like ramen, hot babe and ramen. I dislike, pervert, yaoi. My hobby is doing, research, training, sleep and gardening. My dream is. Balling his fist, closing his eyes and open them again he shouted with so much vigor, to have a harem, and make nice guy pose with shinig teeth. All of FT fell to ground and their body twitched. Looking at the blonde with admiration in his eyes, Natsu raised his arm, what is a harem Naruto? Clearly he didn't know about the adult world at all. Naruto palmed his face, can't believe there is a guy who didn't know harem. But he still explained the meaning to him, harem is where you have more than one or two girlfriend, lover or wife. Got it. No, is this kid serious? He thought but asked him again, how old are you? Natsu frowned, not understand why he asked for his age, I'm 18. Naruto nodded. Ever have girlfriend before? Natsu shook his head in denial. Naruto sighed, listen Brad, you have a gray teenager life. You wasting your teenager life, without girlfriend for 18 years? What kind of a man are you? He flicked his forehead. Urza growled behind him, stop corrupting his mind. Naruto looked at her but then he got an idea. Urza-san are you by any chance a virgin? He asked slyly. Urza blushed, W. What are you? Naruto smirked, thought so. He turned his head to Lucy and Mira, both of you too right? Both of them blushed in embarrassment. Other member gawking, apparently surprised that this guy playing with Urza and Mira. The blonde however hold his hand on his stomach, trying to hold his laughter, but Makarov decided to end the girl's embarrassment. Stop it Naruto. What are you getting at? Embarrassing them like that. Naruto pouted, ah. You ruined my fun old man. He whined. Makarov only have one thought in his mind, this brat is too handful for me. But then the blonde showed him a collection of photos. When he looked his eye went wide. Naruto grinned at him, what do you think old man? Good isn't it? Makarov nodded. Naruto give the photo to him. Makarov crying anime tears and patted his shoulder while saying good job. Then. Naruto wrote his registration and waiting for his stamp. Mira come and give him stamp on his back shoulder with the color of orange. Makarov decided to ask him something that bugged his mind. Naruto. The blonde nodded, are you the yellow flash? Naruto tensed and the pen that he used snapped in half. The whole guild turned silent upon hearing the yellow flash. You know old man, it's not nice to accuse someone while you don't have any evidence, his voice lowered. Meanwhile in the middle of it, Natsu break the silent, what's wrong Macau? Turning his head, Natsu could see that the older man was nervous. Master said that the blonde is the yellow flash. Natsu growled upon hearing that name. He hates people that killed other people and use magic. In his belief magic should be used to help people not to kill, and yellow flash is no exception. While he takes normal mission the bastard takes assassin's mission too and what worse he kill and didn't care whoever his victim. Woman, children and something along those lines. His eyes narrowed and look at the blonde. The rumor said that he had blonde hair and blue eyes, pointed Makarov. Naruto laughed at that. Seriously old man, only because I'm blonde and have blue eyes it does not make me him, he mentally smirked. You're strong and definitely a warrior, spoke Urza. Naruto shrugged and went back filling his registration, well, I definitely strong but that alone isn't enough you know, Urza just shrugged. He give his registration to Makarov, it must be hard for you Mira-chan. Being near this perverted old man every day, he said and give sympathy look, Makarov twitched. Mira giggled, it is. Makarov twitched again, Naruto. You have no right saying me a pervert, you're one too. Me, pervert you say? His voice raised two octave, you insulted me old man, I'm not a pervert. I'm super pervert, he declared proudly. Makarov jaw dropped hearing that. Mira have massive sweat drop behind her head. Anyway old man, I'll come tomorrow. Don't have house or apartment yet. He turned and walked to the door before disappear. The next morning. Fairy tale is in uproar. That made the blonde curious. What was happening here? He turned and asked Macau. The only answer he got is that Natsu, Lucy and Happy do S class mission without permission. He raised his eyebrow. What is wrong doing something like that? Oi old man. Makarov turned and looked at him. What's exactly Hapabed here? Macau said that Natsu and Lucy goes doing S-class mission without permission. What's wrong with that? 
Makarov stared at him as if measured his ability. Am I already sent Gray and Urza but they haven't back yet? Finally he spoke, Naruto I want you to bring back Natsu, Lucy, Happy, Gray and Urza from Galuna Island. Naruto raised one of his eyebrow, Hem why? Is it because they do S-class mission without permission? He walked to the job board, Urza is S-class mage right? They're nothing to worry. Makarov kept insisting him to go. Not having any choice he agreed, but with one condition. He turned, I want Mira-chan home made ramen. He looked from his shoulder. Mira nodded. Okay. Right then he disappeared in swirl of leaf. Mira looked at Makarov. Worried, master is that okay? He isn't S-class mage you know, but he didn't answer that question. Harjin Port. A blonde young man grumbled, clearly he's pissed and annoyed. Stupid idiot fire breather. I swear most of Dragon Slayer just an idiot that loved to fight, damn it. As he walked, H didn't notice the girls looked at him with heart in their eyes. Naruto keep mumbled, them. I'll drown Natsu after this mission over, burn gray and turn happy to shark. Maniac grin appeared on his face. Then I'll, hem what should I do with Era and Lucy? He pondered for a moment. Deciding to forget the subject for a moment he asked a man with bandana on the boat where is Galuna Island is. The man offered to give him ride there but he declined the offer. Why? Naruto jumped to the water and to the man's surprise he stand on the water. Because it faster traveling this way, then dashed toward the island direction. Thirty minutes later, Naruto arrived at He Island. He used almost one third road of his chakra to run and walking on the water. He flared his chakra to get someone attention. After waiting for a moment and no one came he suppressed his chakra and leapt and jumped the tree. With other. He was fighting against the blue haired mage that used Hado. But then he felt a huge amount of magic. Apparently the Hado user felt it too as they stopped fighting. The dog face, whimpered. What was that? Natsu. That power come from the beach, blue, forgot his name. Monster. That kind of power is monster, dog face the same as the previous. In the middle of the forest, a man wearing a mask felt it too. Hmm. Is that another fairy tale mage again? He mused. Put it simple, everyone in the island feel Naruto chakra. Naruto kept jumping and saw a clearing. He jumped there and found that most of it was melted. Only in the middle that's still okay. Inspecting for a second he felt another chakra form the forest. Come out, I know you're there. From the bushes a short man wearing a strange mask come out. Naruto frowned, something was off with this man. The man smiled at him, my my are you the one that flaring his own magic? Naruto nodded, have never seen you before. Dot who are you? Dot not telling. Answer Naruto and put both of his hand behind his head. Something was off with you. I can't decide it what is it though. His hand then caught what appeared to be a flying green orb. He glared at him that was dirty you know, and crushed the orb with his grip. To his surprise the orb then reformed to normal again. He 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 surprised aren't you, this is my magic, one of the lost magic arc of time. This magic allow me to control time, he smirked at Naruto expression. As for the blonde, his eye is wide as a saucer, cool. But I take that it won't affect a living being seeing that you didn't turn me onto an old and wrinkled old man. The man smiled very perspective don't you the orb then flying again aimed at the blonde solar plexus this time he punched the orb and send it flying this magic indeed can't affect the living being but it more than enough to kill you here he shouted naruto smirked as the orb once again come do you really think that you can kill me the orb flying and hit his head dot but what shocked the masked man is that the orb went past thorough the blonde your magic maybe let you to control time but my magic is able to control time and space. I call this magic the arc of time and space. He declared and mentally laughed seeing the MM mouth hanging. The truth is, that just a normal bunchen that he used as replacement with Kawerimi before the orb hit him. As for him, he was utterly shocked and surprised. This man in front of him able to control time and space. That kind of magic was never heard before not even in lost magic that kind of ability was heard. Well I must be going now. The blonde turned and waved from his shoulder, it was nice to meet you. Woman. Then he disappeared. The MM was even more shocked. 
slowly his body shifting and change into a beautiful dark-haired woman, wearing white kimono. With short skirt. What an interesting person. She thought but felt someone squeeze her butt. She quickly turned and see a grinning face of Naruto. Nice butt. And the orb slammed to his head as he burst to smoke, leaving Ultir alone. Naruto jumping faster, he heard a roar just a while ago. Tracking Natsu magic signature he soon found himself in front of a shrine. He entered and saw that Urza and Lucy running. He followed them and was fairly surprised to see that Natsu flame fist clashed against a demon fist creating a small shockwave. Much to his surprise the demon body turned into dust. Okay what's happening here? He come out. Urza shocked to see him there. Deliora just turned to dust. Said Grey with disbelieve tone. Naruto noticed that a white-haired man crying. It seems all magic absorbed Deliora living force. She explained. All we saw is just at last moment. The blonde remembered about the MM. She must be trying to get this demon. He thought. Bringing Leon outside they talked about the curse and the way to turn the villager back to normal. Grey turned to Leon. Leon shrugged. I don't know. Beside we live on the same light for three years yet we didn't change at all. Beside no side effect had been confirmed about the moon drip yet. Are you saying that it wasn't your fault? Natsu asked. Naruto sighed, yes he clearly implying that Natsu. Don't you hear what he said? No side effect about moon drip. Urza nodded. The villagers never came to see us even after three years. Leon continued. Weird. Shouldn't they able to see moon drip light? Why don't they inspected the shrine? Lucy elaborated. Naruto eye widened as he realized something. I see. No wonder they couldn't came here. But save the thought for himself. The village. Upon coming back Natsu was surprised to see the village back to normal again. A knowing smile plastered on Naruto face. Urza then told the villagers to gather. She has began to talk. The moon has been purple ever since three years ago. Why any of you never go to check what was happening? We already tried to inspect the shrine. But, every time we go to the shrine, somehow we got back here, said the elder. Naruto nodded, I see. Just as I thought, the other looked questioned. It seems because of the moon drip, it created a lens above this island. That's why the moon turned purple. They all nodded. Pointing at the moon, he continued, it seems it affect their memory. Urza gasped. You mean. Naruto turned to her, correct. Anyway we should destroy the lens. Urza nodded and ex quipping her giant armor. Naruto confused by her action, what are you doing Urza? He then inspect her armor for a moment, normally I wouldn't complain about your armor, but this one totally ugly. I like the flight armor more. It show your curve perfectly he he he. He giggled. Urza ignored him, walked to the center of the village, counting how much and how far the distance she stood in the moon. I'm going to the destroy the lens, she said earning an excited look, and a disbelieved look. For that I need your flame as propeller, Natsu. Natsu jumped, clearly excited, okay. But before she could throw the spear the blonde hand grabbed her shoulder. Naruto looked at her, I'll do it, he said with a serious voice and face that make her shivered, before nodded. The blonde pulled out one kanai, then attached an explosive note to it before throwing it to the moon. The kanai then stuck and explode shattering the lens revealed a normal moon. The villagers so happy that they will back to normal. But something unexpected happened. They still in their demon form. Lucy stuttered at the sight. What happened? Why they didn't change? Naruto turned and looked at the villagers. Because from the very start they were demon. And this is a demon's village. B. Dot but what about they turning into demon every night? Lucy asked. She's become scared. Just like Naruto said before, the moon drip affect their memory. Urza answered. They thought that they were human. Suddenly a voice come from above, what they talked is true. We actually a demon. It revealed the man that brought them and gave Naruto the direction hovering above them with a black wing. And then all of villagers remembered their origin and make a feast. A demon feast. Unknown to them, except one person, someone watching them from the tree. Ultir looked at the green orb, it showing a blue-haired man wearing white suit, what do you think Seagrain Sama? They exceeded my expectation, it wouldn't be any good if they stand on our way. He, why would we stand on your way? Said someone behind her, she spun and saw the blonde handsome man again waving at her. 
We meet again, woman, he said stressing at the last word. Both of them didn't notice that the blue-haired man eyes widened for a second. He smirked seeing the blonde, oh, aren't you the yellow flash? Ultir eyes went wide, not expecting that the blonde is the yellow flash. Naruto frowned, what's make you say that? But the figure smirk widened. Spiky blonde hair, a captivating and vibrant blue eyes with three scars on his cheek. Wearing a strange plate on his forehead with vest that had a red spiral. Am I wrong? Naruto smiled at him, bing bong, you're correct. His voice was happy. So what are you saying just no? Mind telling me? Ultir looked a bit unsure but Jello smirked even more. Seagrain Sama, should I kill him? He shook his head, no Ultir, you wouldn't stand a chance against him. Yellow Flash, I have a good job for you. I'll tell you what ours plan but first you must agree to help us. I'll pay you good. Naruto narrowed his eyes. Next morning, the gang finished their job and Urza refused the payment, only taking the celestial gate key for Lucy. Gray turned at Urza, how we will go back. Urza pointed to the sea and they saw a pirate ship heading toward the island. Once it stopped the captain of the pirate which turned out to be Urza fanboys allowing them to board at their waved at the villagers as they departed, leaving the island. The gang talked to each other. Urza noticed that Naruto have been alone this entire time. She decided to approach him. Hoping that their relationship got better, not in romantic way, remember they fought before. Naruto turned when he felt a hand on his shoulder and see Urza smiling face. He earned the smile and gestured her to sit. The atmosphere is normal. So what are you thinking about? Urza asked. Naruto shook his head, nothing. It just, I was a bit happy to back again. The truth is his mind has drifted off somewhere. Urza nodded, totally buying his answer. Few minutes later they already laughed and smiled at each other. In on of the room stood Seagrain and Ultir. It was too bad about Deliora. I'm sorry Seagrain Sama, I never thought, that woman, magic was that strong. Ultir apologized. Seagrain waved it off, it doesn't matter. Though it would be good if I can get my hand on it. He turned to her, it's not good to call your mother like that, the tear of Ul, Ultir. I respected your mother, if she lived there was no doubt that she will become one of the ten saint wizard. My mother just a miserable woman that obsessed with magic. That's why her husband left her, I bet she didn't think much about me, she said with surprisingly calm voice. Seagrain shook his head, smiling, the fact that she took apprentice was evidence that she care abo, but the young woman put her finger on his lips. Let's not talk about it anymore. What about our plan? He smirked, ah, our plan will move shortly. With his so-called, help, there won't be any problem at all. Not even the son of Igniel. Not Sudragniel will, and clenched his fist. Soon my dream will come true. Street of Magnolia City, six people or should I say five human and one flying blue cat walked together. The red haired girl is smiling, clearly in good mood. The blonde male that walked behind her kept glancing at her butt. While the black haired one, strip, the other blonde has this genuine smile on her face. The pinky boy was frustrated. The cat is flying. Ha! Natsu sighed, we finished the job but didn't get the reward. I, only Lucy that got the reward. Added happy, she is a celestial wizard and got the gold key. Lucy giggled, well, it's okay right? No it's not. Yelled Natsu, then his eyes turned as he got an idea, why don't we sold it? I, Lucy grabbed her key protecting it from the soon to be theft, Urza interrupted their happy time. It's good and all being in full spirit. But, once we got to the guild you'll be punished. Naruto smiled at them, that's right Natsu, too bad it's not me the one that will punish you. Urza eye twinkled, maybe master will do, that, Natsu, gray and happy shivered. No, anything but that, screamed Natsu. Lucy saw Natsu reaction immediately felt that it wasn't something good. What is, that, gray? She asked gray. Gray just shivered and Urza dragged Natsu who was still screaming leaving Naruto alone. The blonde himself was smiled at their action. Enjoy this time as much as you can my friend. For this won't be last forever, then he catch his step with them. Unknown location, Ultir didn't like someone that she couldn't control, and the blonde, the one that called Yellow Flash she really didn't like him. 
Not only she can't control his action but she was the one that got controlled. Flashback. After Seagrain cut their connection, she was thinking to leave immediately. As she was about to jump a hand grab her shoulder, preventing her from leaving. She turned her head to him, what do you want? Her tone was angry. The blonde eyes narrowed and looked at her suspiciously, you're the one that controlled his mind, don't you? She was surprised, to think this man could detect it, seems she really underestimated him. Even so she couldn't let her cover blown now. I don't know what are you talking. Me controlling Seagrain Sama, that's not even possible, he's stronger than me. I see, he smiled, you're right that's not even possible. Then he did something, and darkness took her. When she came to her sense again, she was surprised that the blonde grinned at her, as he want to say that he knew something. Well Ultir San, we should back to our own job right? The blonde still has that grin on his face think of Jin. It irked her to no end. He jumped down and walked toward the village. Sop. He stopped his step and turned looking at her. The stupid grin still there, what are you planned? The blonde tilted his head, what am I planned? Smiling at her he continued, I don't know what are you saying. The smile turned into a devilish grin, what I know is you manipulated a poor boy named Jellal to get one of the key to release Zirf from his seal, and your member of Glimwar Heart. That's all I know. She was terrified, how did he know all about that? Then she remembered that he did something before she blacked out. Don't tell me he hypnotized me. Seeing the face of the black-haired woman Naruto smirked. He just got information about Glimwar Heart and it master and also the most evil mage known as Zirf and Seagrain or Jellal's scheme to revive him again. He just need a simple genjutsu to extract it all from her. The prospect to fight the master of one of the greatest dark guild and the most evil mage making him excited. It seems he won't get bored, for now he just need to manipulate the woman. No need to worry, I won't tell anyone about this. About your guild location. He said with a smile, to her she looked to the face of devil itself. Of course you need to pay for it. Flashback end. Now she must do what he said. She can't let the Kusal know where their guild location. At least until he died fighting in Rakuan Tower or annihilated by Ethereum. For now she will do what he want. Even if she didn't like it a bit. The group just entered the guild, and Urza was looking for Master while Natsu kept screaming he don't want, that. That's why I ask you. What is, that, asked Lucy. She clutched her head trying to figure it out. Urza glare at them, shut up. They immediately shut their mouth and Naruto flinched seeing Urza look just now. She turned to Mirajan, where is Master? He is out for a while. That makes them feel better. Yosh, old man isn't here let's take a mission so he won't get to punish us, said Natsu. I, even Grey nodded in agreement. They both walked to the job board. Ya Natsu welcome back. Turning his head he saw that it was Loki. Loki. He turned to look the job once again. Lucy popped out of nowhere beside Loki. Lu. Lucy, I don't know you're back, he said, frightened. Of course, I'm with Natsu after all. She stated. Loki turned away, trying to run but bumped with Naruto. Passed out. Lucy's sweat dropped, weak. The pink boy pick one of the flyer. From what it righted the mission is easy they just need to understand the meaning of the word and they'll get 500.000 joule. Oi Natsu, stop it. I don't want to get involved with your miss again. Naruto said, scowling. But the mission is easy. We just need to figure the word meaning. Gray looked at the flyer, isn't this ancient language? Who the heck could read it? But there is transliteration next to it in modern character, pointed happy. Better stop Natsu, you have a really bad luck, Naruto said and turned his head to Urza, right, Urza. Urza nodded in agreement, yeah, stop it Natsu, ooh I can read it, it says, Ugo Daru Rasuchi Borokanya, as he finished there is a rainbow light. So some people get so terrified of punishment they'll sprout rainbow. Wakaba commented. I don't think that's it. Macau replied. The light finally died down. I'm cold. Said Grey as he shivered. Elfman become confused. Ice mage felt cold. What the hell? Why is my chest so freaking heavy? Lucy complained unable to hold her heavy chest she bent dwn. My back is killing me. Loki got up feeling confused. Ing, why am I sleeping? E.H. 
Why am I stand? added Natsu. He turned and saw Lucy near him. Scared, he ran screaming. What the hell Natsu why is he screaming seeing my face? Lucy scowled. Macau noted something different with the way she talk, what's wrong Lucy? You speak lower than usual. No way. Gray answered only to freak out seeing Lucy. Why is there someone here that looks just like me? Oi Macau, since when you become so big? The blue cat asked and turned his head to Urza, precisely Urza's skirt, oh nice view. Urza frowned, since when happy have tendencies to look at girl's skirt, especially her, does he have a dead wish? What the hell why it's so dark here? said Loki, irritated, the most surprising is Naruto behavior. Oi Natsu, where is Natsu? asked Naruto, his voice sounded happy and funny. The one that answered is Loki, ah. The male member gave him envious look at his impressive package, Urza blushed, Kana stared in awe, Mirajan squealed, wow, and their head turned immediately at her, she just give them innocent look, what? Happy was shocked and pointed his paw at him, what? Dot why is my body there? He looked at his own, what the hell since when I'm cat? What are you saying happy? Answered Macau amused, I'm Naruto, yelled happy, he turned to the blonde, you're happy right? The blonde nodded, the cat freaked even more. Natsu come in, he's drolling fire, he seems panic as Naruto. Ugh. That's disgusting. Commented Wakaba seeing Natsu fire droll. Natsu ignored him, what happened to me? I feel hot all of sudden and I'm drolling fire. Haven't you guys realized it yet? Said Urza, her face serious, your minds and bodies have, switched places, and turned her glance toward Naruto package again. The victim screamed. Which means, Natsu and Loki, Grey and Lucy, and worst of all me and Happy. Yelled Naruto. What do you mean by, worst of all? Asked Naruto happy feeling insulted. Magical words of ancient Umpera. A shadow stood on the door. You have activated Changeling. Makarov revealed. Old man, that request is the cause. When you read that spell, the people nearby swap minds. He explained. Lucy grabbed Loki's shoulder, you're not so right, yeah. Grabbing his collar she continued, what the hell have you done? Loki twitched, don't ask me. All I did was try and read the request. Enough Lucy I mean Grey. Surprisingly it was happy, he's clawed the floor and chewing a log. Uh, what are you doing happy? I mean Naruto, asked Makarov. Happy turned and his eye had strange glint, this. I just sharpening my claw and teeth to shred and cut Natsu. Everyone shuddered. Makarov coughed, I'm thinking to punish you guys but it seems impossible now. Ah the one that swapped not only your mind but also your magic. He continued, if you don't undo the spell within 30 minutes activation. Dot you will never be able to return to normal. Aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
The other was surprised seeing the look of pure terror on his face. What's wrong happy? But he just whimpered there like a scared cat. That's what happening if you tried to use my magic. Happy said, at least my power didn't consume you happy. They shuddered at his voice tone. There is a long silence. Loki, break it, our magic swapped but we suck at it. The tension disappear, that means we are. Fairy tale weakest team, they finally realized it. And me will never got laid anymore. Sighed, happy, disappointed, at least I still able to cat. He looked to lower RGION of his body. His eyes went wide seeing it. No way, happy body didn't even have a. How am I going to a cat now? The other looked at his lower body too, and immediately pitied him. Sorry Naruto, seems your adventure ends here. Natsu asked Mira again, how long? Just eight more minutes, what should we do now? Don't worry Lu Chan, I'll help you. Some said that turned to be Levi. Levi Chan, Gray cried and hold her hand, but I must become your novel first reader, Gray nodded in agreement. Okay let's start it. Levi began to read the book while Jet and Droy give her cheer. Yash cheer is needed, said Elfman and he joined the cheer. Makarov come again. I forgot that you can only return one pair at one time. Of course it will be me and Gray first, said Gray. No, me and Loki first, right Loki? To which he nodded. No way, you suckers can go and stay there for eternity. It must be me first or the ladies will lose their prink charming. Happy exclaimed, I don't care who's first, added Naruto. What did you say? Loki bring his face to happy level. Want me to kick your ass, huh? Happy smirked, kick my ass, look who's my backup brat. Loki turned, he saw that Urza cracking her knuckles while Mira just smiled. He gulped, okay Naruto, happy, you guys first. Happy smirked at that. After a long time, two minutes alright I got it. Happy stood in front of her, now Levy Chan, turn me to normal again, pleaded Happy. Levy looked unsure, but I promised to change Lu Chan again. Happy twitched, ah who cares just turn all of us now. Okay, Arubaroya Tsura Rugi Goo. The light came again, this time engulf everyone. The light died down again, I'm back to normal. Said Lucy clearly happy. Me too. Said Gray he sighed but drolling again. Lucy went and hugged Levy, how'd you do it? Tell us. The words themselves didn't have any extra meaning so I tried reading them backwards. There aren't many characters in ancient writing, so reading backward can activate different effect. So I read the characters backward and the magic lifted, she explained. Thank you Levi Chan, you saved us, added Gray. It's not lifted, Loki and Natsu shouted, I'm lifted but my body turned to Makarov. Naruto screamed, oh ho 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 what a nice body. With this I should be able to score on many cute girls, said Makarov with perverted look. What do you think Mira? Mira asked to Urza. Eh our mind switched to Urza. Mira looked at her body. Man should not be. Ehy is it stink of sake. Kana turned her head and saw that Elfman drank a barrel of sake. Ehy me Elfman. Ughh I'm drunk. He pass out. Eh this is out of my ability. Levy gulped at the situation. Don't worry Levy. I don't mind this body at all. Naruto. Reassured her. You don't mind, but I mind. Old man, yelled Makarov at Naruto. You could score with sexy chick but me could not. And that day fairy tale full of voice as the member tried to back to their own body. It's morning thought Naruto as woke up with a massive hangover. But he felt someone snuggling closer to him. He turned his head and saw a pink hair. First thought he was thinking that she was Sakura, but he remembered he isn't in elemental countries anymore. Must stop thinking about them. He thought as he got up and take a bath. Few minutes later Naruto already wearing his Junin attire looking at the pink haired chick that's still sleeping, trying to remember the event last night. Okay, I come here because Jellal called me. Then he threw a welcoming party for me. Got drunk and she came to me, talking and everything happens, groaned Naruto. Better seize Jellal first. And he walked out leaving Akaruga sleep. Jellal Fernandez a man with great ambition and dream in his mind. When he was young, he was one of the kids that working here to complete the forbidden magic R system, along with Urza Scarlet. He took the castle after Zerf spoke to him. 
Now he looked at the tower. The tower that will make him achieve his dream. By reviving Zirf. Now he got a new tool in his disposal. A strong tool. A tool that will do as he says as long as he paid him enough. A tool that called Yellow Flash. Naruto Uzumaki. He chuckled, to think he will help them. He mused. His musing interrupted. Someone entered his private chamber. He didn't surprised at all seeing who was it. He knows who it is. Can I help you Naruto? Jello asked smiling slightly at the blonde scowling face. Yeah, you can help me Jello. Replied Naruto clearly annoyed. When is the plan begin? I'm bored. When we are ready. He answered. Naruto scowled. Fine. He noticed the smug grin on the blue haired man face. What with that grin? Jello grin widening. Oh, nothing. Shouldn't you back to your guild now? Naruto raised an eyebrow. Why? Apparently fairy tale attacked by Phantom Lord. Shouldn't you there to help them? He asked. No, let them fight by themselves. Naruto replied, smug grin on his face. Oh, why is that? Don't you like your guild? Jello asked again, curious about the blonde intention. I like the guild, but that doesn't mean I'll help them. Answered Naruto as he walked to the door. And less beautiful girls who asking me, I won't help. He stopped again and looked at him from his shoulder grinning wide, say hello to all Chan. Jello just stared at he place where the blonde stand before laughing remembering fuming an annoyed face of Ultir every time he mentioned Naruto. Naruto walked aimlessly, he still bored but one event already caught his attention. Fairy tail attacked, it nagging his mind, while he has no one who is important to him there he quite like Makaro. He remembered him of Saru Gigi. He took a deep breath, calming himself. Sometimes he regretted coming here just because he was bored. Now he missed all of his friends. Their face appears in his dream every night. Tsunade, Sakura, Ino, Hanada, Tenten, Kuritsuchi, Mei-san, Samui, Kurinai, Shizun, Karen, Tamari, Shian. Why is that I only remembered the girls? He thought aloud, okay what about the guy? And he concentrated again this time appear Aruka sensei Kiba, Sai, Shino, Neji, Nohamaru, Aoba-san, Gai, Gara, his rap buddy killer B, Chojuro. I think I forgot someone. He mused. Nah, must be some side character who isn't worth mentioning. Kakashi suddenly crying and feel the urge to strangle someone. After the flashback of his memories, Naruto looked down. The guard kept watch the place diligently not knowing they just a sacrifice for Jello or should he said Ultir and Gilmar heart ambition. You seem distracted Naruto Han, may I ask why? The voice snapped him back from his musing. Turning back he saw the girl that slept with him last night. I am just thinking about our plan Akaruga. Naruto replied. Akaruga nodded, is something worrying you? She asked politely. Naruto always thought the way she talks really funny. Is there someone talking like that back at his village? He asked to no one. He stared at her intently making her a bit uncomfortable. Don't you afraid fighting against Titania Urza? No, at very best her skill on par with me, she said confidently. Are you worrying me? Yup, I worried about you. He replied easily. He did not notice her cheeks color changed slightly. Thank you. They stood there in silent about a few minutes. Naruto broke the silence, Akaruga, how do you handle those two freak? You mean Vidaldus Han and Fukuro Han? She asked him back, seeing his nodded she continued, I don't know. I see, he mentioned her to follow him. You three seems merged into one body, she nodded. He's stunned for a second. Here a beautiful chick and an idiot rocker and owl. How in the blue world hey could get along? Not to mention how about their gender when they merged. Whose personality dominant? Many questions swirling in his head. It must be hard to be on same team as those fools. As in luck, those fools walked past them. Who are you calling fool huh? Snarled Vidaldal Taka, man with long hair and strange tattoo and he always brought guitar with him. The other one just twisted his head in owl fashion. This man Fukuro, he has an owl head. Is his father got frustrated his wife didn't give him any, he decided to attack owl. Just one damn woman, thought Naruto. I talked about you two you fools. Naruto sneered, hearing your name make me want to rip you apart, shove knives in your butt and break your guitar and then bury you, piss on your grave and dig you again. 
You just jealous of my talent in rock. He shot back. You don't have any talent at all. Idiot blondie. A vein popped on Naruto's head. I don't need talent. You just one trick pony. Akaruga looked amused at her team and new comrade. She don't know who was the blonde except that Jello told them he will help them. She can feel it though. The blonde is strong. He's also very good in bed not to mention his stamina. Unconsciously she licked her lips. Naruto still in argument with the rocker was startled when Akaruga pulled him back and led him to his bedroom. Still stunned the blonde managed to shout one last thing, you got lucky this time you freak. Next time I'll kill you. Try it, shithead. Vidaldus answered hotly while saluted him with his middle finger. While she was amused by their behavior, she wanted to spar with him again. As they reached the room, she threw him to the bed and jumped on him and kissed him passionately. Not one to get dominated Naruto began to kiss her back. Their tongue fought for dominance as his hand massaging her ample breast. She ed, because of his luck really good and reached god level someone contacted his lacrima. Getting up to check who is it, his frown disappeared when he saw it was Mira. She seems greatly worried and scared. Yo Mira, what is it? Asked the worried Naruto. Naruto, our guild attacked. She said, we can't contact Mistgun and couldn't reach him. Laxus didn't want to help us. Naruto mouth was hanging hearing her answer. To Mira he seems stunned by the news, while actually he's in that state thanks to Akaruga do some of her sword kata. In. Snapping back to reality Naruto nodded, okay I'll be there shortly. Just keep them busy for a, just keep them busy okay. Mira nodded and Naruto cut their connection. Akaruga looked at him still doing her kata, what's wrong Naruto Han? Fairy tail got attacked and they need my help. He said and walked to a chess board. He moved the black pawn and white knight, smiling slightly. Sorry Akaruga, but I must help them. If not they will be suspicious on me. Akaruga smirked, don't because it a beautiful girl the one who was asking you. She got her answer seeing Naruto smirk. That's one of the reasons. He stood on the window. The other is because I'm an assassin, soldier, warrior, monster and many more. Therefore, without fight or war I'll perish from this world. Who am I to refuse a war that will prove my existence? With that he jumped down to the sea and disappeared. Akaruga's just stood there. So touched by his word aka bullshit that she didn't even blink. Naruto appeared near the guild. He looked around and noted most of guild's member was fighting and being pushed by Shade's troopers. Turning his gaze to the machine in front of the fairy tales guild, he noticed magical runes around it. The blonde shinobi frowned upon recognized the magical runes. Abyss break, a spell which need casting four elements, fire, water, earth, and wind. Well, if they didn't beat the four elemental first, this is it for fairy tale, thought Naruto and threw Kanai to Macau location, impaled a shades that about attacked the fire mage. Thanks Naruto, Macau said. The blonde waved it off, no need for that. For now just concentrate on defeating these er, and backhanded one of the shade. He slid out his hidden mechanical Kanai and coated it wind chakra. He slashed and continued to destroy the shade's troopers. He glanced around to find Mira but couldn't see her. He asked Kana, the closest at his location at that time. Kana answered that Mira already go with Elfman and Grey to the walking fortress. Sighing the blonde continued his attack on the shades again. Everything was good and all until the shades troopers merged together and form a jellyfish-like ghost with hand. Quote exclamation mark quote. Naruto cursed and barely jumped out from the jellyfish fist that attacked him. What should I do? I could just go to sage mode and smashed, throw it to the machine to stop the abyss break spell, but. He was interrupted by a massive fist to his location and jumped back. Strange, it was targeting me, thought the blonde shinobi as he continued to dodge the punch that will be the end of his if it connected. As another blow come down once again, the blonde jumped up above the monster and did sequence of hand seals, took a deep breath, Fudan, Daitapa, and let out a gust of wind that sent the monster crash down to the ground. You guys, keep attacking this monster. The other member attacked the downed monster. However, even after taking that much attack that relentlessly attacking it, the jellyfish was up again without any injuries or slowing down at all. The blonde also noticed that the magical rune disappeared, that means they managed to defeat the elemental four. Well, 
The issue right now was the big shades jellyfish that turned it attention to the guild again. Not him anymore and completely ignoring the attack that the other member throwing at it. Then he heard a loud explosion from the walking fortress. Naruto squinted his eyes to get a better focus at the hole that just created by the said explosion and grinned as he saw that it was Natsu. An idea struck Naruto's head, Natsu shoot your fire dragon breath here. Fast, give it your best, the blonde shouted. The pink-haired mage turned and his eyes went wide seeing a black and big thing, slammed it hand to the guild. Naruto continued, Natsu just shoot your damn strongest fire darjan breath here and everything will be okay. Natsu stood up immediately and when he was about to release the fire breath was forced to dodge from Gajil's iron fist. Gajil didn't give him the chance to release his flame breath. Damn, that bastard. Naruto was angry and furious. That black hair dared to interrupt Natsu. Don't he know that if the guild get destroyed, Mira will sad. Sad Mira mean no time to play around and eat Myra's handmade ramen and that's absolutely no time to get laid as they will busy to rebuild the guild. Thinking fast, the blonde threw three kanai after coating it with wind chakra and with quick hand seals he clasped his hand together, Fudan, Repusho. And the wind force tripled the projectile speed, flying toward Gajil who was still attacking Natsu not noticing the dangerous condition he was. As Natsu took deep breath, Gajil was about interrupting him again, forced to stop and dodge the kanai that flying to his head hand and feet. He managed to dodge the attack to his head by ducking and feet by jumping but missed the last one, piercing his iron reinforced arms limb like a hot knife cutting butter. The iron dragon slayer roared in agony as Natsu roared and shoot his flame dragon's roar. Naruto's grinned when he saw the kanai pierce Gajil's arm and wider when Natsu's flame closed in. He immediately create two cage bunch and focusing his chakra on his palm. While the bunch and flowed his wind chakra, the guild's member could hear a loud ringing from Naruto's location. The blonde finished and thrust his Fudan, Rasengan, spiraling sphere, to the ball of fire that closed in. The wind jutsu make the fire bigger and rotating like a tornado when both technique collided. The technique engulfed the jellyfish in an instant. In the background Naruto was laughing maniacally. Ha 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 this is madness, I mean justice, take my newest technique Kaden. Spiraling fire h a h a h a h a h a. the other guild members sweat dropped at the blonde slips. As the fire died down, Naruto's laugh become more smaller and smaller and turned to nervous laugh. Reason. He didn't count the fire would be that great and resulting the guild become the technique's victim. Leaving only a few lumber. A bead of cold sweat on Naruto's face. Uh. Well I must take down Jose now. Bye. And ran quickly to the walking fortress while the other members still dumbstrucks at the guild's condition. Zero approximately zero to zero approximately zero to zero approximately zero to zero approximately zero. Naruto arrived and saw Urza was one one knee on the ground, facing Jose. He pinched his nose to stop his nosebleed seeing Urza's very revealing outfit. Maybe I'll ask her favor to use it, Naruto thought and giggling silently. Shaking his head to kick out his perverted thought, now's not the time, thought the blonde he quickly drew two kanai and tagged the explosion tag. He threw the kanai to Jose's feet when he was about to attack Urza. Jose smirking when he saw two strange knife with a strange paper in front of his feet. His thought was Urza's reinforcement was nothing but idiot for not able to hit him with the knife. The smirk was gone when he heard a hissing from the paper and explosion destroyed a good portion of the floor. Naruto glanced at Urza, currently in shock seeing him entering the fight. Naruto, get out now. You can't possibly win against him. He's one of the ten wizards saint. Nah, it'll make things more fun, replied the blonde casually. The smoke dissipated, revealing the injured Jose from the explosion. He was glaring at Naruto. You brat, I'll kill you for this. Ing, his eyes narrowed, taking the sight of the blonde, studying him carefully before smirked evilly. I see, the rumor that said you join a guild really is true, eh? The blonde raised an eyebrow. As far as he remembered, he never met this man before. And here he was, talking almost like he knows about him. Have we met somewhere before? I think I've never met someone as ugly as you are, the blonde said. Jose gained a tick on his forehead before taking a deep breath, you may not know about me. However, that doesn't mean I don't know about you. 
You're famous after all. Naruto's eyes widen, he knows what the man trying to say. Personally, he doesn't mind someone talking about him, but right now Urza was here. It's possible that Urza will discover his true identity and then told the other member and then Mira-chan will praise him about how cool he was. On second thought that's not a bad idea actually. While Naruto still in his own world, Urza quickly asked Jose the question that has been in her mind for a while. The fact that Jose said that the blonde mage was in fact famous certainly piqued her curiosity even more. The only clue she had was the fact that the blonde might be the famous and feared mage. Now is the good time to know. What are you talking about? You mean you wanna say you don't know about your fellow guild's member? Jose asked incredulously, clearly not expected someone to not notice the glaring resemblance. Each one of us, have our own problems. If Naruto doesn't want his past to be revealed that's fine with us. Urza stated. Yeah and here you are trying to get information about him. Jose said dryly, Urza blushed in embarrassments. Oh well, doesn't matter. I'll tell you anyway. Two years ago, or at least about two years ago, a big incident happened. Jose said dramatically, a big incident that shocked the era and many guild masters. Wah! What kind of incident happened? Urza asked and took a brief glance to her guild mate who was standing there silently. Exactly what happened? Urza asked again, fully intended to gain the information. Jose smirked, the incident was three of the Grimoire Heart Guild alliances destroyed, and then not so long from destroying them, he also destroyed seven of Tartaro's alliances simultaneously. What's more, he didn't have any scratch on him at all. Can you believe it? Ah, no, not destroying those poor guilds. But slaughtered them all, down to female members as well. Jose corrected and smirking seeing Urza's reaction. Urza was very unprepared to hear something like that. To think her goofy guild mate had destroyed ten dark guild all by himself, and not even received any injuries or scratch at all. Her body trembled in fright of what Naruto could do. Sure she knows he was strong, having defeating her easily when they first met. But, this revelations. Naruto himself was looked at Urza, trying to judge her reactions. So far, it was as he expected it would be. Frightened, and the she will be angry at him. And maybe will confront him or at worst kill him. Nah, that won't be happening. She was far too weak at heart, not to mention far below his level. Turning his gaze to the pony-tailed hair of Phantom Guild's master, he looked at him sharply. This guy's strong, no doubt. But is he really as strong as the old man? Thought Naruto. From what I've seen so far, this guy only up to Junin level. The same as another Fairy Tales S-class wizards. Far different from the old man's cage level. While the blonde trying to judge Jose's powers level, Jose himself was thinking of how to make Naruto as his subordinate. It was truly unfair for Fairy Tail to have all of the strong mage. They already had a famous mage such as Titania, Laxus, and the Mistogan. And now, Yellow Flash. Truly unyouthful of them. And now, with plan already devised in his brilliant mind, self proclaimed Yellow Flash, why don't you leave these fairies and join me, and together we will make Phantom Guild as the strongest guild in Fury? He began his plan. Oh, care to tell me why should I? Naruto asked lazily. Phase 1, accomplished. Moving to phase 2, if you join me, you'll have anything you want in this world. Persuade him by talking about giving him the whole world. Yeah, sure, I'll have the world in my palms, eh. Naruto replied sarcastically, you know what? I don't give a damn about the whole, conquering the world whatsoever you're talking about. All I cared right now is how to make myself not bored. When I'm bored, I'd be pissed, then I'd be angry and then if I'm angry something bad bound to happen. Frankly speaking, you bore me now. Jose Chan. A tick mark appeared on Jose's forehead, angered by how the boy insulted him and dared to refuse his invitation. You had your chance boy. But you blew it up. Now prepare to die. He yelled. Dead wave. And shot a purple energy at him. The blonde smirked. These fool mages really don't know about shinobi at all. He could just avoided the attack easily, but if he do that, Urza will be hurt by the attack. Sighing at the situation he currently in, he reached to his vest pocket and took a paper with the kanji, shield, written on it. Fuinjutsu. Activated. Tate, shield and an invincible dome appeared around him and Urza, 
stopping the attack dead on. He quickly do hand seals, Fudan, Daytapa, great breakthrough, and blew a strong gust of wind from his mouth throwing him out to the wall. The wall cracked from the force of the impact. He could see clearly that Jose struggled to get back to his feet. He clearly underestimated him. A mistake on his part. Oh well, not that he cared anyway. I expected something more from someone on Makarov's levels. Or were your title just a bullshit? Taunted the blonde. Jose was furious. This boy, how dare he says that he just some complete bullshit. How dare he? Seeing the anger clearly written down on his opponent's face, Naruto's smirk grew even wider. Ah, how easy to make this fool to angry. Does he understand that anger will cloud you mind so that it will make you attack recklessly and give you opponents many openings to attack? Naruto crouched down, prepared to attack him with his top speed. Sure his speed not as immense as his father but it was enough to rival Itachi's. Stop Naruto. An elderly voice stopped Naruto from attacking the already downed opponent. He turned and saw that it was Makarov, hovering above him with dramatic winds that blew from somewhere. He also felt three people coming to their location. Turning up it was Grey, Mira, and Elfman. Master, they all said in union, except Naruto who was giving Makarov a glare. Makarov seems noticed his frown, as he gave him a stern stare. This is a fight between Master Naruto. This is my fight, they dare to attack my children's, I'll be the one to punish this trash. Makarov said with tone of finality in his voice. You take back the other now I'll be there shortly. Sighing, the blonde relented and turned to his other guild mates. You heard him, let's go. And took Urza bridal style while Elfman grabbed his sister and Grey jump off by himself. Makarov kept looking at Jose, who was now regaining his bearing. Jose, give up and I won't be forced to do anything harsh to you. Makarov tried to offer him a last chance. Jose laughed maniacally in response. Give up. No way old timer, I'll defeat you here and right now. He shot another attack at Makarov who countered it with his own attack that looked like a yellow light. Both attack trying to overpower one another before it was a tie and each of their attack hit them, knocking them back slightly. A really good amount of magic at such a young age. Too bad you use it to attack another guilds not to guide the new generations. Makarov said and gathered his magic on his palms, creating a ball of light. Last chance, give up or I'll give you 10 seconds to reconsider it. However, Jose didn't give up. Instead he also gathering up his magic to match Makarov. I see, so that's your answer. Then so be it, and he clasped both his hands. Fairy law is invoked. A blinding pillar of yellow light shot up to the sky and a magic runes with fairy tales logo appeared. The light shined brightly, engulfing almost all of Magnolia. 0 approximately 0 to 0 approximately 0 to 0 approximately 0 to 0 approximately 0. Naruto who was still carrying Urza in bridal style, stopped abruptly when the light appeared. A frown appeared on his face. He'd saw almost all type of magic, but this one is new to him. Fairy Law, Master Makarov's ultimate magic, Urza said suddenly as if she read his thought. The magic talk the form of light, and attack whoever the casters see as enemies. In short this magic only have effect on enemies. Naruto asked, nodding his head at the new revelations. True this magic was too good to be true, just like Edo Tensai and pure world resurrection. The spell's range, and effectiveness really are tremendous, judging from Jose's life force that he felt has gone very weak. This spell are dangerous, even for myself. Though I already have a way to counter it, thought Naruto. 0 approximately 0 to 0 approximately 0 to 0 approximately 0 to 0 approximately 0. The light died down and revealing the now very pale and unconscious Jose. Makarov turned his back to him, and told him that he should never mess with fairy tale, not caring whether Jose hear him or not and walked away from the scene. He looking down towards the now destroyed guild thanks to Naruto's fire technique. River of tears ran down on his cheeks as he also saw the royal guard came to their humble guild. Sighing deeply, he was thinking to step down as the master and retired as mage. Though, right now he needs a few talks with his newest recruit. He wanted to know whatever things he did on his journey for two years ever since he arrived to this world. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.